NetEase has announced the War Within begins in China on August 1st. Now, this is great for the Chinese, of course, you know, the return of World of Warcraft and everything, but did Blizzard just reveal the pre-patch date? Maybe. In a streamed press conference, NetEase announced that Retail WoW service in China will be restored on August 1st, starting with the War Within pre-patch. The hell? Did Blizzard just announce the War Within pre-patch without announcing the War Within pre-patch date? And launching with the full expansion on August 26th alongside the rest of the world. So, um, I mean, either we're getting it before that date or we're getting it on that date at this point. August 1st uh, would give us a decent amount of time. I mean, you're talking about, what, 26 days? If you got the early release version, you're going to have about 20... August 1st uh, is too late, in my opinion. I don't know. I don't think we need longer than that with pre-patch. I mean, that would basically be three weeks of pre-patch. I think that's uh, that's plenty. More than three weeks. Have you talked about your uh, the Dr. Disrespect situation? Can always use another Oh, man. Night. Thank you for hitting off that hype train. Yes, uh, Kra Cairo Cass. Three months. My God. Thank you so much for being a Death Knight of our Scourge kicking off that hype train. I appreciate it. Uh, I have talked a little bit about it, but not much. Not much. We'll get into it a little bit later. Uh, again... Joined by Blizzard, uh, Jonah Ferris, and Executive Creative Director Chris Metzen, welcoming back players to the World of Warcraft. Servers have been offline since 2023, so that's right, they've had to degenerate their way another way. Because they have not been able to play WoW. There's a couple little launch things coming out for them as well. But again, the most important thing coming out of this announcement, really, is that August 1st pre-patch date. Uh, that sounds about right, and I think that's probably when we're going to get pre-patch as well. Moving on. The War Within Pathfinder requirements added. How to obtain steady flying in Khazalgar. Now, if you're wondering, Sam, why do we need Pathfinder? I thought we're getting dynamic flying out the box. Uh, yeah, you are. Or sky riding, I should say. We're going to have that available right away. This is for actually the regular version of flying. So if you want to be able to toggle between that in uh, the new lands of uh, Khazalgar and stuff, you're going to have to do a little bit of an achievement. And uh, the achievement is really little, uh, in all honesty. Basically, all you have to do is complete the campaign in each of the zones and discover all the little nooks and crannies of those zones as well. So just revealing the map in the entirety of the zones and then playing through the entirety of the campaign in each of the zones will give you the ability to toggle between uh, dragon riding flight slash dynamic riding flight slash uh, what do they call sky riding flight. That's the, you know, the dynamic version and the uh, regular version of flying. So uh, that'll be able to be unlocked for you pretty quickly. Basically, everybody who plays through the campaign early on will unlock this Pathfinder requirement. I'm moving on to Transmog UI updates. So if you don't know this, uh, you're going to be able to unlock, you know, Transmog for anything in your warband, right? Any class, uh, basically. So if you're playing your warrior, you can loot mage stuff for your mage. You can loot uh, cloth items on your plate characters and vice versa. So Blizzard's actually adding a little filter for you. You'll be able to filter through your transmogs by class, which is a really nice addition considering that our basically our transmog logs are going to fill up with a ton of stuff. Again, I wanted to iterate on this. If you guys uh, don't, uh, if you guys currently have anything that would say would be a transmog for your mage sitting in your warrior's bags or bank, don't delete it until the War Within goes live. You need to hold on to those because they will not transfer over until the War Within is live. So hang on to those items, and then eventually you'll be able to filter through them using this nice little filter toggle here, uh, which is really cool. It also shows up in this little paint window pane here where you're looking at tier sets and different things. So a nice little addition quality of life thing that we're probably going to need once you're able to basically go through all of the uh, different versions of uh, uh, different sorry class specs and everything like that. Uh, moving on to this final piece of news here. Earthen NPCs have been added to Thunder Bluff in the War Within. Now, we already knew that we saw now Earthen showing up in Iron Forge, Storm, and in Orgrimmar. Now they're also showing up in Thunder Bluff. Uh, some interesting little lines here from some of the ones that uh, are currently showing up in Thunder Bluff on the PTR. Uh, one of them says, I spent cycles studying the runic ley lines beneath Kazalgar in the Ringing Deeps. They were familiar to me, like a language I've always known and understood. But here, in these lands, the lines are different. The runes somehow familiar and yet entirely alien to me. The, these rune masters speak of them as veins within the earth. They, they have many legends on the air origins and speak of an earth mother and her veins that surge with primordial essence. 
They even speak of nearby healing hot springs powered by these ley lines. How intriguing. Yeah, so these uh, these earthen, just like the ones that we talked about in or uh, Orgrimmar and Stormwind, are learning a little bit about the cultures of Azeroth. And these are getting to know of the Earth Mother and, uh, you know, the religious, basically, deities of the Tauren. Uh, the other one that uh, shows up, Hegara, actually says something more interesting. She talks about the origins of the dwarfs. So she says, I'm starting to understand why we were met with uh, such distasteful gaze when we first arrived. The Torin tell me of their history of our fleshy descendants and how they tore through their land in search of treasures and secret secrets pertaining to my kin. No less, even the most ambitious of Stonebound knew that when the earth rumbled and quaked, its voice must be heard and its might respected, lest we pay the price for angering it. There is a mighty reverence for the land here. Perhaps our Stonebound will visit it one day. Yeah, so interesting little, you know, tidbit there. The Earthen are, in fact, related to the uh, to the Dwarves. I think many of us already knew that. The Curse of Flesh is really what separates them. Uh, but some talk about how, you know, the Dwarves haven't respected the land the way the Earthen do. And that's real separation between the two, is the fact that the Earthen really do respect Azeroth and everything, and its voice, while uh, the Dwarves, and maybe... A side note, our little Diamond Pond buddy, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Bronzebeard, is, uh, is you know, uh, he's angry that he can't speak to Azeroth anymore, and we've talked a little bit about that, and how weird it is that, in fact, he cannot hear their voice, but now everybody else can. Uh, origins coming all the way back from the Earthen. Very interesting stuff. I'm sure we'll continue to see more Earthen popping up in different capital cities around Azeroth. 